Um, as you could see, uh, when I took over this program two years ago, uh, we were facing quite a few challenges and uh, we did quite a few changes for the architectural technology and environment program. Again, I'll abbreviate it as ATE henceforth as my name, it's quite long. So uh, many of the changes were necessitated because of the resources, the challenges we were facing, the way the university had structured the programs, how we are operating. But more so, I would say, because of the program's team's ambition uh, to be more aspiring and uh, desiring to develop a program which is forward-looking. And uh, I'll be presenting about one strand of that as how we integrate architectural technology studio with architecture students in the final year, which we are now doing it for three, all the three years. But this is a sort of example of how we did so far. As you could see, there are two uh, definitely distinctive programs with a clear learning outcomes, with clearly established aspirations. And uh, what we are trying to do here is satisfy the needs of the professional bodies, but also to retain and celebrate our own identity. So the simple solution for us to start with was, yes, we have to bring them together in a design studio and start working together. And if I stop there, probably that would be the end of my presentation. But what is interesting about how we did this whole process is, uh, I'll take two steps backward to explain how the whole thing happened. And in that process, I'll talk through in the next 15 minutes the overview of what is this program, how we developed the first and second years, and how that feed back into the third year architecture studio, what we are uh, doing in Plymouth University. And the school, which is known as Architecture, Design, and Environment, uh, interestingly has three disciplines and to the best of architectural technology we are sitting between architecture and environmental building group so we have the programs on one hand building surveying construction management architectural engineering and on the other hand architecture so I, I felt this is the strength of the program what we could look at because architectural engineer uh, architectural technology is now uh, in a position where we can literally pick and choose which modules or where we how we want to operate. And uh, the best part was that, uh, uh, as you could see, we are sharing around 50 to 50 percent of our modules with uh, construction managers and building surveyors. So uh, that was a quite a natural alley and uh, we had no problem with that. The challenges was when I looked at the left in terms of how we work with architectures. And uh, most of the time it was, we were sh sharing the same discipline and same building, but most of the time it was standalone programs without any connections or interaction. So four years ago, there was a proposal to say, okay, why don't we run the final year studios together? And the first year we ran, uh, ran we had a huge backlash and uh, we, we had to face quite a few challenges and problems. And that's what led me to start look at what is that we could do really to make this happen? Because A, there was no choice. B, some of us were really, really keen that we we wanted to make it work. So I'll take you back through the process to show why that was a problem. Because as you could see, uh, I'm just focusing on the final year uh, modules here. Uh, the red one is the only design module what we have in architectural technology. And when we said our students are going to sit with architecture students who had two modules back to back, right starting from the beginning. So architecture students would have had first semester of their design module and our students would jump in at the second year, uh, sorry, second semester and have no clue of how, how to integrate and how to go about. If that is the problem we were facing at the discipline level, we also had problems within the program in terms of, uh, I have highlighted three, program, uh, three modules there because the other four were more of the ones which we are sharing with environmental building group, so we had no control over what we are doing there. Rather, these are the three modules which were again working in isolation rather than talking to each other. So we had few modules which were not talking to each other. We had two programs which were not talking to each other. So all we had to do was see how we could communicate in this process. Uh, like how we tell students, we thought, okay, why don't we look at out of the box and start finding the solution for this? And that's where I started feeling the solution probably may not lie just here. We may have to again take you two steps backwards to start talking about how we work right from the first semester, first year. And this is where we started putting together changes. So we said we have to change the culture of our working, 
and give a sense of identity for our architectural technology students and that is where the whole changes has to happen and the first thing we did was integrated the communication and the design studio module and said it, it would be studio based and live project centered projects and that's what changed the whole dynamics of how we operated the first year and that is where we started talking about the tectonics of making when architecture students were talking about the conceptual and experiential understanding of how the design develops. And we were trying to build the parallel system along with the architecture students, though we are not talking to each other yet. Secondly, we, uh, what I consciously did was I brought in each modules in the first year to feed back onto the design studio module. And we started asking those hard questions, how we are using them in the design studio or in the project. So it was taking very simpler mod projects like how you could see in these models and asking those questions of the learnings, outcomes of the other modules which became a lot more practice-led and we started exploring the impact more as a sort of performance base in the second year. Again, the module, uh, sorry, model we continued to assess using different models feeding back onto the design studios, but more importantly here we had the opportunity to look at the technology module and that is where I totally reworked on the technology module to now map onto the design studio module. Earlier, we used to have independent two projects. One, you write a technical report for your technology module, do a design project for your design module. Now, simple change was every work they produced in the technology module was informing the design decisions what they did in the design module. So there was not a separate submission or review or essay. Rather, it was how we constantly reiterate our design process in the technology module, which informs the design decisions. And the result uh, was quite amazing because this is where we introduced series of softwares in terms of SAP, IES, Therm, and those were the ones which started informing to reflect onto the design decision. So by the end of second year, we started developing the understanding of detailing, of what we were discussing in the morning. And one of the things what I deliberately changed was saying that the learning outcomes or the skills expected by architectural technology stu students would be completed by the end of second year, not to take it to the third year. The advantage of this was our students were ready for placement. So the number of students going on placement from 15 to 20 percent now jumped to 70 to 80 percent because I deliberately invite practicing technologists and architects for the reviews and crits. So it was more of a case where they used to straight away hire them and there was a clear win-win uh, situation on either case. And this also gave a sense of confidence for our students because that is what we were lacking earlier in terms of having the identity and sense of confidence when our students started working in the architecture studios in the third year. So this has in a way set s scenario or scene for us now to say, okay, now we are getting into final year and start working with the architecture students. Rest of it same. We started feeding back the different modules into the design studio and small tweak again was uh, I started working on the technology report where earlier they used to make it more case study based which was just looking at a particular any given primary school and write a report. Now we said hold on a second now you are going to understand what you are going to do in your design studios and use that as a sort of preconditioner or a precursor to start analyzing it as a sort of precedent in your technology module. That made huge change and that is where I called this whole presentation as research led. So it, it's a rigorous process of understanding sustainable technologies at, at that dissertation topic, but that was informing the design decisions what they are going to do in their second semester. And more importantly, I used the other module, the MATS 3 to 1 for the ease I am using that term. Uh, I said that is where they are going to understand the basics of how architecture students are going to work. So this, this is the one module which I sat with our students to more of a warm up and give them the idea of how exactly we work with architecture students. And this is where we brought in, as, as I would show you in a second, um, the understanding of uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, analysis of uh, buildings or projects and how that integrates with architecture. So if I look at the relation now, it, it's now we are looking at a sort of celebration of two different 
projects coming together because of the way we started looking at the dissertation module. So even architecture had have a dissertation module where they are looking more of a theoretical, cultural or social base and we are looking at more as a sort of a diagnostic, still case study informed but the case study is now used as a precedence of what they are doing as a design decision. And now that becomes a sort of body of knowledge which is now overlaid as a sort of a, a scenario for them to start looking at a live design project and in a complex way our architecture uh, program works as a sort of vertical team where second and third years work together and they are split into different design agendas. So there are uh, each um, design agenda is led by a tutor who comes with their own strong emphasis on a particular theme. Now our architecture students have split into those different units, what we call it as design units, and now they are part of the group with architecture students. And uh, this is just to give an idea of how we start developing from there to the next stages of design development. Uh, what you could see is now that it, it's more of a thematics of how or the scenarios what they develop. It's not prescriptive, rather it's more of a scenario based. So we are not suggesting student what they should be doing, rather they pick up some of these threads or the, uh, or the process and they, they can do any of this. A simple example is this from one of the design units where uh, the tutor is letting student to explore any of these options. Interestingly, you can't differentiate whether it's an architect AT student or architecture student who is picking up which thread and how they are going to work <coughs> on this. And it, it lies neither in the camps of architecture or in the camps of ATE. And that is what helped us to move this forward. And at, it's at, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> it's at that particular time we started giving the input both in terms of uh, environmental and also spatial and um, social cultural aspects. So the best part of this whole process for me from AT students' point of view is that the right side, which we would have missed otherwise being focusing exclusively on environmental issues, is now being totally covered. And they feel a lot more stronger, a lot more uh, comfortable and confident because we have already given them the basic requirements of, of the environmental issues in the second year. So the combination is, uh, as a, ju just to give a, a further uh, background, uh, this is when um, the university said we are sending all, all our students to Euro European trips as a sort of policy. We said, fine, fantastic. So I thought we will use this opportunity to start again bringing back this as more as a sort of precedent study or analysis and how we can tie that back into our design studios. So what you could see are the, the uh, it, it was more of an expectation from the students when they come back after staying <coughs> five days in Europe, different cities, is use, uh, they are good at the two things on the right, that is the quantitative um, uh, assessment and the modeled assessment which they, they, they would have been very confident with. What we pushed them now to do is the left hand one, that is the qualitative and experiential analysis. And that was actually exactly same brief given to architecture <coughs> students as well, which they realize once they come back and start developing and working on it. So all the inhibitions, all the apprehensions and all the worries or uh, all the issues they face would start melting down by the time they come back and produce this work and that literally happens by the end of November or so. So by the, by the time of that, now they know that what, what we are expecting from them, how they are different from architecture students and what is that they can contribute and produce which makes them confident to sit on the table and say that I am a team player or I am a team member. Which as I, as I said here, now lets students to exchange ideas and which we firmly believe as how the industry works and we are just trying to provide a sort of uh, reconstruct the practice which is happening within the university con context. So in short to summarize what I said now, uh, if you look at any of these works, a, a group would have four students and in that one would be a TE student and they go through the similar process now, they, yes, thank you. <laughs> Uh, and they go through the similar process, they, they work on the master plan, they work on the briefing document, they identify they where they want to situate their building and from there when they take off, ATE students are now a lot more stronger because now they know how to 
assess and understand the building in terms of performance, but they also know how to look at the building more as a sort of um, experience. And that is the combination which helps them to now produce a work which starts looking at the detailing. And the best part of this whole process is that we push them to come to an understanding of what they want to do by the end of, say, three, third to fourth week of their design decisions, because we don't want the detailing to be a tick box exercise. Rather, it's process where this informs their design decisions. The best part is that because we have already made them to commit to their design in terms of the de detailing and go back to their design revisions, which forces now architecture students to take this as a sort of feet forward. So it's not the AT students who are following architecture student, it's the other way around. Because now they suddenly started realizing now they are the game changers. Because any decisions they make for every of the details here would have impact on the master plan and the decisions what, what whole group in, in totality is working on. Which made a huge difference because if on one hand the design decision is derived or reflected from the master plan, on the other hand it was hardly pushed, rather pushed very hard to ensure it also reflects the performance. So the details what, what I showed was derived again to understand what exactly they are doing and this is where the second year technology module has been extremely useful. So now they look at how the junctions behaves, how the building behaves, how the tectonics of the materiality works and how they can bring that back onto the design solutions and how the whole thing works. So what you find in the process is a series of de detailing and design decisions which acts as a process which feeds back onto what they are doing as a design. And if I remind you the first slide I showed about the first year work, we are bringing that experience back here and ask them now to look at the models not as a sort of final product but rather as a design process. So now they start looking at different scales of models right from 1 is to 200, 500 to 1 is to 5, 10. So that, that is where now they start looking at the detailing issues which again helps them to go back and revise their decision. So I reiterate that fact that what we really stress is ask them to finalize their design literally at the third or fourth week of the beginning which allows them to work for next 10 weeks to keep revising their work till the last week. So which is the huge difference in terms of how, how we are operating now. Okay. So what I would say is that what we are providing is uh, an understanding of which has experiential and also the performative values which are produced, which has a so sense of knowing, which is considered coherent and uh, collaborative body of work. So what you find is a equal consideration given from left to the more of a experiential understanding from the architecture background to the right, more of a, a, a underpinning performance as a sort of benchmark as a criteria. And the best part, this is produced by ATE student being with, with in, in collaboration with architecture students. So this is the final work what they have done last year. So what you find is that process explained on the left side and a final panel what is being shown on the right. I just put up another student, so just to give an idea, not that every student does the same way, it, it's each student has their own way of looking at or working at the things. And what is amazing is now they start feeling the confidence of being able to work with architecture students. And what we have done for that reason is that we have taken one further step and being bold. Now we are integrating all three years of ATE studios with architecture students with a specific and clear learning outcomes which defines what is ATE as opposed to what is architecture. I'll stop there. Thank you.